Hello everyone. Thank you for taking a look at my video here of my Isuzu diesel powered 1980 K30 tow truck. Um, yes, I understand you're looking at a much newer body. The original one, a Minnesota body. <laughs> yeah, uh, made Fred Flintstone's car look good. Um, so I swapped on an 84 body onto this frame before swapping in the Isuzu diesel. Um, redid the interior. Had to do a lot of repairs on the service body. Um, it still has its original wheels and tires uh, because it is tall enough now that it doesn't quite fit in my garage if I put actual wheels and tires on it that I have for it. Um, it is complete, it has a wheel lift that is down by my storage shed. It's also got two, uh, I would call them belt tripods off the back um, for it. I still have yet to get to those. Um, this is a continual work in progress and so far what it's done for me is is a lot of good um I'm more straining my back to lift large heavy things which is the main reason why i got it uh it's sitting on eight inches of lift in the front using super lift springs in the rear it is off-road design shackle flip kit and heavy duty shackles Um, let's take a look at the motor, probably the most important part that you all want to see. And there it is, it's a 1979 6BD 1A from who knows where, I don't know its original job, but I got it from a friend in a big trade deal several years ago um, went to the junkyard and picked out parts off of a later model 6BG1T which is essentially the same motor uh, they reside in a lot of your 5 ton box trucks things like that uh, they're probably more plentiful than a lot of people realize parts, parts aren't the easiest to get but the beauty of the internet, you, you, they are obtainable. Um, my biggest problem, <laughs> water pump. But it was doable eventually. I utilized the Chevrolet alternator and power steering pump. I still use the um, good old Hydro Boost brakes. All work very well with this motor. Uh, the reason why I went with this motor is because I wanted an alternative to a Cummins that did not come with the price tag. If you know and you're a diesel person, anything Cummins is ridiculous and expense, and I did not want to do that expense. Uh, I went with crossover steering, steering arms, because I wanted to get rid of the original belt or uh, drag link steering with the lift. Um, even though it's lifted, I still had to lift the body a lot to clear the bell housing. The bell housing is still the SAE, I think, number three, which is very large. Um, as you can probably see down in there, there's very little clearance. I also used the Isuzu 5-speed two-wheel drive medium-duty transmission. has pretty decent gearing. Uh... I'm not sure if it's a one-to-one -one or an overdrive, but it doesn't matter. This thing is in a high-speed rig. No sway bars. Okay, and then for the rest of the drivetrain, I utilized an NP205 Divorced. Made a custom driveshaft flange to mate to the Isuzu output. 
um, because I didn't want to pour a lot of money into the PTO for the hydraulics I found a uh, sorry a PTO output off of an old military truck Chevrolet I forget their M designations uh, I made both the or all three of the drive shafts utilizing parts I had around um, does work very well I've had it down the down the road 30 40 miles an hour seems to work as should had to make a custom cross member that would hold up the transmission had to make a custom transmission mount very simple stuff though so anybody with a minor bit of fab skills can do this kind of stuff I see my uh, e-brake cable is rubbing the middle drive shaft after where I will work on that um, I utilized a K5 blazer uh, cross member cut up and sectioned in that's what the hump part is <laughs> sectioned into the stock K30 cross member um, one issue that I really don't care for is that lack of clearance between the oil filter case or housing and the front axle of course front axle this being a K30 good old passenger drop king pin being 60 456 gears that came in at stock used to have a small block that's in 465 married 205 now it has 456s a Detroit locker in the rear aka the no spin that you can find in junkyard if you're pretty crafty at digging around um, the tow unit is what's known as the trooper 1100 really nice tow unit uh, 10,000 pound capacity uh, good for light vehicles up to a pickup truck anything more than that in the truck itself is going to struggle to hold it and still be able to steer um, the two hoses you see in the back are the extend and retract hoses for the wheel lift oh well, let's go ahead and give it a start see so y'all can hear it I just disassembled and cleaned up the interior. Most of it is original, except for the seat. Um, the seat is a uh, back seat out of a Suburban. All you gotta do is change over the, the uh, mount brackets and some other bits and pieces and they bolt right in. Yeah, much, much better condition than what you find most truck seats in. Let's give her a light up and see how she goes. Um, I added the glow plug switch and kill cable because this is a manual uh, diesel. PTO still works as Holmes uh, designed it in its original location where it was in the truck to begin with. Um, one thing about these Isuzu motors over at Cummins, they rev to me a lot better. Sorry, it's a little cold still. It's about 20 degrees outside right now. Alright, let's go and shut her down so I can continue talking. I 
apologize for the sun glare. I had to uh, make a custom shifter for it. That one would be tough to explain. I'd have to tear the truck apart to actually show it to you. Okay, getting this motor in this frame very much like the Cummins. Frame modica modifications galore. Very large oil pan. I do have a, a leak. Of course, it's not a diesel if it doesn't leak something. Okay. I used Chevrolet motor mounts. Uh, bent up a tubular cross member after cutting out the original cross members. Then utilizing a uh, frame kit with the boxes. I made this, but of course I reverse engineered it off the internet. And ran kickers, these guys, up to the frame to kind of help with a twist just a little. And uh, for the diesel, because it has a lot more torque and a lot more weight than even a big block Chevy. Uh, the springs hold up everything quite well. It's a pretty comfortable ride. Uh, radiator, of course, is a diesel four row. Nothing special. Chevrolet just had to uh, come up with some hoses and such to get it to connect. Um, it still has many a wiring issue that I must work on. But other than that, I extended all the bump stops so that the suspension will work as it was meant to so that I don't break springs. The suspension, yeah, kind of kind of in tough shape, but it's kind of like a tractor around your farm. You use it when you need it. So if it's not in perfect shape, it doesn't matter that much. Um, I do have a set of 37s for it, and I did intend on using it as an off-road wrecker because I am a jeeper. But I'm not sure I want to still continue with that. We shall see what the future holds for this thing. It, it becomes more of a part of my life than it has. Um, I've worked on it very slowly. It has taken me seven years to get to this point, especially mounting the engine fixing all the rust in this thing um, most most of the panel sides you see were replaced you can kind of see there a few of the patches um, new fuel tank because the old one was rusted out and porous plus transfer over to diesel uh, there's an original passenger door. <laughs> it's kind of a story behind that, hauling the cab home. And, yeah, accidentally destroyed the original passenger door to this cab. But, that's it. Um, give me some comments if there's anything more you want to see, or if you have any questions. I used the diesel pump off the 6BG because it was for turbo. The one that was on here was for NA, naturally aspirated. So I didn't know if it would fuel correctly for the turbo. Timing them is a cinch, not like a Cummins. This is very easy. Um, another beauty thing over the Cummins, this is a wet sleeve motor, meaning infinitely rebuildable, provided you don't roach the bottom end. So if she starts to wear out, it scores a cylinder, no big deal. Pop the head off, pop the oil pan off, pull the sleeve, put in a new, new sleeve piston rod, parts for a rebuild kit for this on the internet I have seen on eBay for roughly $900. And that's everything. Sleeves, pistons, rods, everything but a condition, reconditioned crank. So, yes, beauty of a motor, very heavy, about as powerful as a Gen 1 Cummins, a good old 6BT, 
uh, I think a little better. It's got a higher power curve. Um, it doesn't like as low grunt as my old first gen I used to have. It doesn't like to pull like that. It likes to be at a uh, higher RPMs, which I don't have a problem with. To me, that that's good if you can, especially if you're going to be off road. You need that horsepower to pull if you need it. But there it is. It's a beauty. It's a good fun truck to drive around. Works like a charm. It's taken me a lot of time and effort, but it was worth it. Thank you for watching.